In this video, we'll be going over add two numbers. So you're giving two non-empty linked lists representing two non-negative integers. The digits are stored in reverse order, and each of their nodes contains a single digit. Add the two numbers and return the sum as a linked list. You may assume that the two numbers do not contain any leading zeros except for the number zero itself. So now, for example, we have two, four, and three, and five, six, and four. We find the sum of the first two nodes, we get seven. We find the sum of the second nodes, we get 10. So we have one carried over to the next row. So it's three plus four plus the carry is equal to eight. So we output seven, zero, eight as a, as a list. So let's go do the dot process. So the nodes, the input nodes, the input nodes are in reverse order. Or we should say the digits inside the input nodes in reverse order this means we can process the nodes from left to right we can implement a two pointer approach so one pointer l1 will be will be inside the first list and then one pointer l2 will be inside the second list in each of the iteration we will be finding the sum of the digits inside L1 and L2. Uh, a side case we have to handle is, a side case we have to consider is the carry. Because the sum of two numbers that's greater than 9 will have a carry. This means the sum at the current two nodes will be equal to so we have sum is equal to l1 dot value plus l2 dot value plus the carry then we will need to append sum modulus 10 to our output list to our resulting list then setting the carry to 1 if sum is greater than 9 Another side case we have to handle is when the input lists are different lengths. This means when we implement our two pointer approach, implement our two pointer approach, one of the nodes may be equal to no. For any no values or any no nodes that we will set the default value to zero this will be more clear as we go through the pseudocode now let's go do a pseudocode we'll create a custom class results to keep track of the um, resulting sum of the linked list or the resulting linked list There will be two fields. The first one will be the head, the sentinel head of the results, and tail is the sentinel tail of the results, which will initially be equal to the head, the sentinel head. And then we're going to have one method in here. The one method is going to be append, append, and it takes in a value. So basically, appends a value to the resulting list. So we're going to create a new node, new node with value, and then we're going to set tail.next to node, and then set tail to node. It basically appends node to the tail. Now, uh, now we can start solving the problem. So we're going, to, uh, we're going to create a new instance of results which is the custom class. And then we're gonna start adding the nodes. While L1 is not equal to no, or L2 is not equal to no. So that means if one of the nodes, one of the nodes at the current pointer is not equal to no, we're gonna retrieve the current value. Retrieve the current value N1 and N2 from the nodes. If L1 is no, then set M1 to zero. We're gonna default it to zero. If L2 is equal to no, 
then we're going to set n2 to 0. Oh, one more thing we need to create is a carry. So I'm going to create a variable carry to keep track of the current carry of the sum. Initially, it's going to be equal to 0. Then we'll have to find the sum, find the sum of the elements or, or the values, and the sum of the values. Sum is equal to n1 plus n2 plus carry. And then append sum modulus 10 to results. We basically just pass in sum modulus 10 to our append method, and then it just appends a new node to the list. And then we'll set carry to 1 if sum is greater than 9, else set carry to 0. And then if L1 is not null, we're going to set it to the next null. Set L1 to L1.next. And if L2 is not null, then we'll set L2 to the next node. To L2 next. And then after all the operations, if carry is greater than zero, then we need to append one more zero to the list. So we're gonna append oh no, we need to append one to the list. So append one to results. And then we're gonna return results dot head, dot sentinel head, and then dot next. That's our resulting linked list. Now let's go over the time and space complexity. So the time complexity is equal to O of n, or O of n, oh yes, where n is the length of the longer list. Visit each pair of nodes, or we can just say visit each node once. Now space complexity is equal to also equal to O of n, which is the resulting link list. Result list. Now let's go do the code. We're going to first create our custom class with our sentinel head and tail. And now we're going to create our method append. Appends a new node to our resulting list. You pass in a value, create a new node with the value. Append it to the tail. So this dot tail dot next is go to node, and then this dot tail is go to node. Now we can start solving the problem. We're going to create a new instance of results and then create a variable to keep track of our carry. And then iterate through to find the sum. Retrieve the current true values. If L1 is going to null, then we're going to set it to 0. Else, we're going to set it to L1.value and then N2 if at L2 is good to know, then we have a default value of 0, else we just set to L2.val. Now we're going to find the sum. And then in sum, let's go to N1 plus N2 plus carry. And then we're going to append sum modulus 10 to results. And then if sum is greater than 9, we're going to set carry to 1, else we're going to set carry to 0. And if L1 is not equal to null, set it to the next node, L1.next. If L2 is not null, set it to the next node, L2.next. Then if carry, after after performing, after operating on all the nodes, if carry is still greater than zero, then we'll append one to the list. Else we're just going to and then we're going to return result.head.next. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below.